You forget we have a whole team here. It's not just me. And it's the best team the school has ever put on the field. Wait, 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 wait. I say we get out there and kick some heavy duty butt next week. What do you say? Nice to meet you, Liv. Hi. Mel stole me a lot about you. Oh, have you, Mel? Uh, you guys been friends for a long time, huh? Since we were kids, believe it or not. It's nice. <laughs> I'm sorry it's so loud, you can't really talk. Let's dance. Okay. Nice. Do you like this? Okay. <laughs> You're not leaving already, are you? I've got a lot to do tomorrow. Still getting used to all of this. Pre-med, right? Yeah, that's a killer. Especially the first year. Well, everything's tough the first year. Heck, when I was a freshman, I needed a compass just to find my way around this place. It must be a pretty good feeling to see yourself up there. Oh, that? I wouldn't be too impressed with that. My incompletes would make a much longer take, believe me. <laughs> My friends just like to torture me, that's all. Well, I guess I... Hey, listen, um, if you ever need any uh, help or advice or anything, uh, just let me know. It can get pretty discouraging sometimes. Thanks. And if you ever need any advice on your incompletes, avoid me, because I have no idea. <laughs> sometimes neither do I, believe me. Well, good night. Good night. You okay walking home? Yeah. Well, that certainly is a new look. I guess I've seen everything now. You sit there back at your big cigars and think of deliberately killing an idea that's made millions of people a little bit happier. An idea that's brought thousands of them here from all over the country. 
by bus, by freight, and jalopies, and on foot, so they could pass on to each other their own simple little experience. What is this? I'll tell you what this is. It's two in the morning. I'm still up. TV's on, and I'm eating ice cream. In one fell swoop, I'm taking care of everything I wanted to do at my house, but couldn't. Almost everything. Almost everything. Oh, you are so bad. Yes, tonight I am most decadent. Well, please, allow me to fetch my trusty spoon, and we shall decade together. Mm -hmm. I saw you talking to Doug Weatherall. Are you interested? Forget it, Melanie. It's too soon after Jeff. Mm -hmm. Okay, forget about Doug. So what would you think? Of what? Of Oh, Ron! Well, he seems very nice. Don't give me that. What do you mean? I mean, I want to know. What did you think of him? Well, I only talked to him for a couple minutes, so... I mean, he's nice. He's different from what I expected. Yeah, he is not a drooly Neanderthal jock, right? That's not what I mean. I know what you mean. I felt the same way. I mean, after all, you were just a snob in training. I, on the other hand, am an actual snob. Everybody seems to love him. Oh, please. What is not to love? Except for the fact he calls me Mel. Which we'll soon break him up. Besides tonight, he passed my biggest test. What test? Mm, the introduce him to Lynn test. Oh, don't give me that look. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, I will bat my eyes at some guy for two weeks until he finally notices. Everything goes great, and then I introduce him to you. And forget it, buzzer sounds, and I lose another one. I can't believe some of the things you say. I mean, I've never. I know you've never. That's what makes it so disgusting. You don't have to do anything. They do all the work. But the point is that even after meeting you, he still remains reasonably impressed with moi. Way to go, Bill. <laughs> you are seriously ill. Do you know that? <laughs> I'm on my own. Are you going to the pre-med seminar tonight? Are you kidding me? I get an allergic reaction to all those suits and ties. Come on, it's important. Try and make a good impression. Nah, I'm not too good at impressions. A little James Cagney's about as far as I go. Besides, if I show up, I'll probably ruin my chances altogether. That's what I call the power of positive thinking. You going? Absolutely. Well, leave us not rule it out altogether. All right. What the hell you do, Cooper? Touch. You're such a wuss. Hey, come on up for a pass, okay? I'm sure you're right there. Come on right there. What, is there a bullseye in my head? Sorry. We really shouldn't be playing here with all these people. So, did you have a good time last night? Yeah, it was fun. You going this way? Yeah. So, uh, is that your boyfriend I saw you with back there? Rick? No, he's just a friend from class. Oh. Does your boyfriend go to school here? What makes you assume I have a boyfriend? I just assumed a girl like you had to be taken. I just broke up with somebody. Different schools. It wasn't going to work out. That's too bad. Yeah. But I, I've been so busy. Pre-med and all? Yep. All right. Well, you know, you got to relax a little, too. You can't be Supergirl all the time. I'll try to remember that. Yeah, well, um, i got to run. Uh, tell Mel, if you see her, that I was looking for her, okay? And uh, remember, if you need any help or, uh, Anything. You know where to find me. Where? Field. Where else?
Why aren't you out there meeting people? Yeah, that's a thing with me, you know? I'm not a natural mingler. I've always scored very low on the mingle scale. Well, that makes two of us. But you gotta get over it. It's all politics, Rick. You know that. Yeah, well, I'm working on it. As a matter of fact... What is that? Just a little local anesthetic. Here, hold this. Should we? No. Cheers. Okay for a girl, you know that? You ever look at people your own age or a little bit older? But they seem like they're in a whole other league. Like somehow they belong and you don't? Yeah. Like right now. This whole thing's a little too high class for me. I'm just a working stiff. This is a little more your speed than mine. Look, I might be able to score a couple tickets to this Halloween ball thing. And, you know, there's going to be music there and all. Um, if I do go, and you want to go too, just for something to do, that's okay with me. I don't think so, but thank you. Oh, bad politics, huh? No, no, it's not that at all. It's just that I'm kind of getting over somebody right now, and, and there's so much stuff going on. Hey, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Forget it. Hey, look, I'm blowing this pop stand. You staying? For a while, I guess. Happy mingling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the hell out of me. I'm sorry. I thought you saw me. All right. I just wasn't thinking. That's, uh, that seems to be one of my problems. <laughs> you look beautiful, by the way. That's what you say to every girl you scare half to death. Listen, uh, Mel's on her way up to my room. Uh, I just got this killer espresso machine. Would you like to come up and join us? Oh, no, thanks. I better get to bed. I had a drink before. I'm getting tired. Oh, come on, it's early. You remember what I said about Supergirl? Okay, why not? Just for a few minutes. I used to, but uh, a little wild over there. It's too hard to study. Best thing about this place, it's all mine. Are you kidding? Well, it's one of the fringe benefits, I guess. Give out a lot of game tickets. You should come sometime. Do a game. So, uh, you're from New York, right? Right. So, uh, how come you don't have an accent? Because I worked really hard to get rid of it. Why don't you sit down? 
I'm fine. What's keeping Melanie? I think you know her. She's probably gabbing to somebody or something. So, uh, what got you interested in medicine? Oh, I don't know. Everything seems so corporate today, superficial. Medicine seems like the one place a person can really make a difference. Does that sound stupid? Hell no, that's why I play football. And then there's, you know, the security of it. At least you know you'll always make a living. People are always going to be sick, right? Mm-hmm. All my parents ever did was fight about money. Always such a struggle. I guess I kind of feel like Scarlett O'Hara, you know? I'll never starve again. Scarlett who? Is that thing ready yet? Ron, what are you doing? Put the lights back on. I don't think we need all this illumination. What are you talking about? Don't you think it's a little more romantic this way? Stop it! Man, don't play this little game with me. I'm, I'm not playing any game. Let me go! Listen, you don't want me to do this to you since we walked in the room. Melanie's coming! Melanie's sick tonight. You know that. Listen, it's just, it's just me and you. It's just me and you. Let me go! Please! Stop it! Please let me go. The human heart is enclosed in a sac, having a two-layered wall. Lubricating fluids fill the area between the two walls. The atria is a very thin membrane, functioning as a collection chamber for blood returning to the heart, pumping blood only a short distance to the ventricle. Then, in a slow but powerful contraction, the ventricles pump blood into the arteries during the remaining 0.3 tenths seconds. Assist all. Now, notice that seven, eight, the time. All but the first one second of the heart. Something I said? <laughs> <laughs> Friend, 
You're page 93 in your text. The mechanics of circulation. Why does there have to be something the matter every time I call? Because you hardly ever call in broad daylight, never mind midnight. I just wanted to talk to you about something. Lynn, are you all right? Not really. What is it, honey? Well... Are you homesick? Is that what it is? Yeah, I guess so. I knew it. Well, we miss you too, sweetie. We think about you every day. Got some. I'd like to see you again. What do you say? you and Ron in there. Now tell me what's happening. What did he do to you, Lynn? He raped me. You ought to go to a doctor. You know that. I'm fine. I'm all right. I don't want to have to explain this to anybody. I just want it over with. You bastard. I'm going to find him and punch his face in form. Rick, please, that's not going to help me. How could you let him get away with this? I mean, this guy raped you. He ought to be arrested. Look, it's hard enough as it is without everybody knowing, okay? It's kind of embarrassing. I don't want to drag my parents into this. They didn't even want me to come to the school in the first place. I just want to put it behind me. At least get out of that dorm. You don't want this creep living right above you. I already tried. There's nowhere to put me. 
I either have to stay where I'm assigned or live off campus, which I can't afford. Well, maybe if you told him what happened. Well, what did Melanie say? Melanie doesn't know. She doesn't know her boyfriend raped you. Would you stop using that word? I don't want to hear it anymore. Then you gotta tell her. Look, it's not that simple. You wouldn't understand. She wouldn't understand. I get it. I just want to make it go away. Can we stop talking about it? Hi. You know, if you were really my friend, you'd stop me from doing this. What's this? Oh, it's just a paper I did for Ron. He didn't have time with the Penn State game coming up. Hey, listen, kiddo. I have been really worried about you in a big way. Now, you did not have breakfast again today. Look at you. You're walking around like someone stole your teddy bear. Now, come on. Come on. What is it? Well, hold that thought. Hello? Oh, you're checking up on me, huh? Yes, Jen. Um, why don't you come up and get it? How was I? be very good at this. I mean, if my father saw me sitting here right now, he'd say I should take care of my own problems. I shouldn't have to rely on anybody else. But I can't deal with this anymore. Looking for help is a sign of strength, Lynn, not weakness. I used to hear stories about girls who were raped by people they knew. And I always thought deep down, they must have done something to ask for it. Things like that don't just happen on their own. Do you think you asked for it? No. I don't think so. But I feel so dirty and so ashamed. I don't know why exactly. I tried to fight, and I told him no. But I couldn't stop him, and I should have. He was, he was so nice to me. And Bam, he was a different person. The thing is, the worst thing is that I kind of like I was attracted to him. I keep going over in my mind. Was I leading him on? Did I do something to make him think that? Because I know I, I didn't. I, he's my best friend's boyfriend. I wouldn't do anything to hurt her. Being attracted to someone is perfectly natural. It doesn't usually end up in rape. I just know who to trust anymore. Have you told your parents? 
I can't. Why not? I feel like they'd never look at me the same again. Have you thought about reporting it? All the time. I keep on thinking of different forms of torture for him. Pretty much are, uh... You do have some choices here. You can file a complaint with the university and get them to call a disciplinary hearing. And you can file a police report and have him prosecuted criminally. The thought of everybody knowing, of everybody looking at me, I don't know. But the thought of him going through his life like nothing ever happened makes me sick to my stomach. getting lazy, you take a look at Mr. Cooper. He plays to win. All right, enough of you clowns for one day. Sit the showers. Heads up, girls. Heads up. You look gorgeous, Ronnie. Gotta keep the customer satisfied, big guy. At least I don't cut my hair with a lawnmower. This just came for you, kid. That's a scoop. You better take a look at this. Rape? Rape? I'm sorry I didn't tell you before. I just couldn't. You're telling me that Ron raped you the night I was sick? Where? His room. You were in his room? Melanie, just listen to me. He told me you were going to be there, too. We were all going to have coffee. I, I hadn't seen you. I didn't know that you were sick. The next thing I know, he's all over me. Oh, and you just couldn't get away? Don't say it like that, Melanie. This is no joke. He pinned me down and forced me. Ron Cooper forced you to have sex with him? You don't believe me. No, of course I don't believe you. Why would Ron Cooper have to rape anybody? He could have any girl on this campus with a flick of his eyebrow. Except me. He had to force me. I can't believe this is happening. I got a lot on my mind right now, okay? I can't Is it true? Uh, is what true? Lynn just told me you raped her. Oh, man. <sighs> Bitch. What does everybody hey, know about no, this? No, look, I am asking you, okay? Is it true? Look, I didn't rape her, all right? She came upstairs with me. What could I do? So you did it with her. Don't get all moral on me, okay? I mean, this bitch is accusing me of raping her. But you did it with her. You slept with Lynn? Yeah! I screwed your friend, okay? I mean, excuse me for being human. She came on to me. What could I do? You bastard. Yeah, well, you don't like it soon. You're the least of my problems right now. See you around campus. <laughs> Extension. What's the matter? What's wrong? Please, Mom, put Dad on the extension and just let me talk. Man, pick it up. Hello. Hi, Dad. Hey, how's the weather out there? I just wanted to tell you something because... Well, because I think you should know. I was raped. You were what? 
Lynn, are you all right? Are you in the hospital? I'm fine. At least I think I am. Did he have a gun? Did they catch him? It's not like that, Dad. Someone put his hands on you. I'm gonna kill him. I'm coming out there and I'm gonna kill him. Please, just listen to me. It was one of the guys from the football team. You mean you know him? Where did this happen? In his room. You were in his room? You mean you know him and you were in his room? I know it sounds funny, but... It doesn't sound funny. When did it happen? Four days ago. Four days ago and you're just telling us now? I, I wasn't going to tell you at all. I, I knew you how upset you'd be. Upset? I'll give you upset. I'm going to come out there and kill somebody. The thing is, there's this hearing, a, a disciplinary hearing. All right, honey, just calm down. I am calm, Mom. We'll be there right away, honey. Tomorrow we're coming. No, Mom, you don't have to do that. What do you mean we don't have to do that? I mean, I can handle this by myself. I just don't think that you have to go through all of this. Hey, this is your mother talking to you, OK? She says we're coming, we're coming. It's not necessary, though. I mean, it's a long trip, it's expensive and all. Not necessary? First you tell us you're raped, now you tell us don't bother coming. What's the matter, you ashamed of us? You think, you think we're gonna embarrass you? Stop it, Dad. Now look. Are we getting the whole story here or what? Is there something maybe you don't want us to find out about? Look, you wonder why I don't want you to come? I knew you'd think the worst thing first. I don't need that, okay, Daddy? So just do me a favor and stay at home. I just talked to Ron. He tells a slightly different story than you did. Does that surprise you? No, it really doesn't. As a matter of fact, I think the two of you deserve each other. I don't have to listen to this. You had to do it, didn't you? Do what? I finally get a guy that I like. The kind of guy someone like me never has a chance with. And you come along right on schedule and you mess it up. Little Miss Perfect everything. Not fair. Oh, yeah, you want to play fair? Are you going to deny it? How about in high school? All those guys that asked me out just so they could get a shot at you, was that fair? I couldn't help that. I didn't even know it. You are not as dumb as you act, Lynn. It makes me sick the way you tiptoe around. All sweetness and light and innocent. When the truth is, you think you're so much better than everybody else. You always did. That is a lie, Melanie. Why are you doing this? Because I've had it with you. That's why. When I think of all that I have done for you, what my family has done for you. You spent more time at my house than you did your own. Now I know why. You probably thought your own family was too low class for you. Leave me alone. The truth hurts, doesn't it? Everything just flows to you. Nothing floats to me, Melanie. I've had to work every summer since I was 16. When I need money, I can't just call my rich daddy and ask him to write out a check for me. Even when we were kids, all you had to do to get something was to ask for it. How do you think that made me feel? I get it. I had more Barbie dolls than you, so you have to steal my boyfriends. You are so damn selfish. Everything revolves around you. All you think of is you. Well, I was the one who was raped. I'm sorry if it had to ruin your day. hormone is derived from a Greek verb meaning to excite. Found in all multicellular organisms, a hormone is a compound which is produced in one part of the body and is then translocated to another part of the body where it transmits messages to target cells and specializations. What's all this stuff about cells? multicellular organisms? That was from two days ago, don't you have that? No, I'm so behind. Could I borrow your notebook later? If I don't catch up, I'll... Read it tonight and digest it well. That's it for today. Here, take your time. I really appreciate this. Really. Listen, um, I heard about everything that's been happening to you. Good luck at the hearing. I hope it goes your way. If there's anything I can do. Oh, no, 
know why you're doing this to me. You have to ask. I mean, what the hell did I do that was so bad, huh? Absolutely, Rod. I mean, now you're trying to ruin everything for me? Why? I said why! Please, just leave it alone. Take a hike right now. Let me just give you a little piece of advice there, sport. Make sure you don't get her alone. She'll yell rape. It's good. You touch her again, I'll kill you. You're gonna be sorry for what you're trying to do to me, okay? That. I'm sorry I didn't punch his lights out. You know what? What? I am too. All right, you do what? You know, I forgot you know how to laugh. Me too. I keep hoping that I'll wake up and this thing will never have happened. Hey, what do you say we forget about this for today? Go get a pizza. I'm not really very good company right now. Hey, that's okay. I'm not exactly Mr. Sparkle myself. Who cares? Rick, it's just... That's all right. I understand. Hey, listen, if you need anything, just bang on my door, okay? Hey, this ex-boyfriend of yours, back in New York, did he know he was a lucky guy? Oh, Lynn. I just wanted to check up on you, see how you're doing. I'm fine. Come on, Lynn, I'm not the enemy. Do I look like such a bad guy? Look, um, the hearing's tomorrow. Uh, I know what enormous strain this has been on you. A situation like this, will everybody loses. I just wanted to know if you'd give any thought to what a strain this has been on Ron, too. I mean, sure, he's a, he's a rambunctious young kid, and maybe he did make an error in judgment. An error in judgment? Is that what you call rape? Come on, Lynn, let's be reasonable, huh? I mean, we're talking about Ron Cooper here. Take it from me, he didn't need to rape anybody. Oh, just leave me alone, all of you. I just wonder if you realize how important this young man is. I mean, not, not only to the team, but to the whole school. Ron Cooper fills those seats. He brings a lot of money into this university. Money that buys books, money that pays for scholarships. You're on a partial scholarship yourself, aren't you? He made a mistake, granted. But why ruin his life? Why hurt the school? I'm not the one hurting the school, Coach. Ron Cooper hurt the school when he raped me. Why aren't you having this conversation with him? Now you listen to me. Nobody hurts my boys. Nobody, Miss Coed. You drag him through this hearing, you can expect to have a very difficult time at school from here on in. I guess you better get your priorities straight.
are you doing? Scared to death. All right, now just keep your head and don't let them get to you. Who's going to be deciding all of this? With the panel, uh, made up of some student reps, some faculty, and the dean. And uh, he makes the final decision. I'm really glad you're here. What did you think? We'd leave you here on your own? <laughs> it's a miracle we're here at all. I mean, we couldn't find this damn building. And then, of course, your father here would not ask for directions. What are men like that? They will never ask for directions. I don't Emily, know. will you? Sorry. <laughs> are you all right? We were going to bring you some breakfast, but we didn't know if they'd let you eat in there. Like a lawyer. Ron has a lawyer? I didn't know that was allowed. A lawyer's not allowed to speak or ask questions. It's just a power play to intimidate you. If it's working, no one else is allowed in except his character witnesses. Just tell the truth. Remember, Lynn, you know you're right. came to my room of her own free will. She knew why we were there. That's not true. And she came on to me on two other occasions, once at a frat party and once in front of the library. That's a lie! He approached me! He even threw a football right at my head just to get my attention. So you believe he was flirting with you? Yes. Then why did you accompany him to his room? Because, because I, I didn't realize it until I thought about it later. Besides, he told me my friend Melanie was going to be there. And when you saw she wasn't, why didn't you leave? Why are you asking me all these questions? Why aren't you asking him why he lied about Melanie not being there? Listen, I tried to leave, but he wouldn't let me. He threw me on the bed, and he held me there. Why aren't you asking him all the tough questions? Were you physically wounded or bruised in any way? Not that I know of. You were forced to have sex against your will, and yet you emerged physically unscathed. And you didn't report this incident until three days later? Yes, but... Thank you. Ron's my best friend. The kind of guy that would give you the shirt off his back. He would never do a thing like this. He doesn't have to do a thing like this. And you know this girl. She's no angel. You know Miss McKenna? Oh, I know her, all right. The whole team knows her. What do you mean? Well... I'm trying to tell you that, that I got it on with her myself. Twice. That's a lie! You're a liar! It was after the uh, game with Syracuse. She met me in the parking lot. Uh, and we went back to my room. She went of her own free will? Absolutely. I heard about her from Doug. He told me I should give her a call sometime that she was a lot of fun. <laughs> he was right. Miss McKenna, anything else? Everything you've heard here is a lie. Mr. Cooper? Sir, um, I first want to thank you and the panel for your uh, time and fairness. I appreciate being able to tell my side of this. There is one thing I feel I have to add, and I hate to be the one to bring this up, but Lynn did admit to me that she had been drinking that night. Are you kidding me? I had one drink at the medical seminar, one. And um, she said she was feeling a little woozy and that Drinking made her feel romantic. Sorry I have to bring that up. Mr. 
Miss McKenna, you've made a very serious charge against Mr. Cooper. I can assure you, we do not take such accusations lightly. By the same token, a charge such as this could have a profound effect on Mr. Cooper's career, indeed the rest of his life. We obviously must consider this matter very carefully. In addition, I find I must recommend to this committee that disciplinary action be taken against you for drinking on campus, which is in violation of the student code. You will both be advised as to our final decision. Thank you. What do you expect? Look what they eat out here. Lynn, are you going to tell us what happened in there? How are things at work, Dad? I'm trying to get off the loading dock. I can't lift like I used to. The job's making an old man out of me. Don't cry. What happened? What did they do in there? They made it seem like it was all my fault. Like I wanted it. They twisted it all around. Everybody lied. I just can't believe people can act this way. And the best thing is that they want to discipline me for drinking on campus. You were drinking? When are we going to hear something? When? They didn't say. Could be a day, could be a week. You look so skinny. I hope you're not on one of those fad diets. What do you expect? Look what they eat out here. Lynn, are you going to tell us what happened in there? How are things at work, Dad? I'm trying to get off the loading dock. I can't lift like I used to. The job's making an old man out of me. Sweetie, don't cry. What happened? What did they do in there? They made it seem like it was all my fault. Like I wanted it. They twisted it all around. Everybody lied. I just can't believe people can act this way. And the best thing is that they want to discipline me for drinking on campus. You were drinking? Are you going to do this to me, too? Why is it every time I turn around, I keep hearing a different story? First, I got to hear that it happened in his room. Now I find out you were drinking. Since when do you drink? I hadn't even thought about that drink until they brought it up. It was nothing. If it was nothing, they wouldn't be disciplining you, would they? Look, I don't need anybody else accusing me, OK? This is something that happened to me here. I didn't cause it. It happened to me. I don't know what made me think that my own parents would be on my side. Lynn, please. Look, Ma, I'm sorry I put you through all this. Just forget it. He's just worried, honey. He just doesn't know any other way to say it, that's all. And I'm worried, too. You seem so different. I mean, you're not the same girl we sent off to this place. I've gotten quite an education. It's just hard for us, honey. I mean, these kind of things did not happen when we were your age. And this is exactly what we were worried about. This co-ed dorm, this whole crazy California life. What do you need this for? Why don't you come back to New York where it's safe? You can come back with us. You could go to medical school in New York. Or forget medical school. Be a nurse. Whatever you do, just come back home. Live with us. You won't have to worry about rent or food. You'll be taken care of. I don't know. I just don't know anything right now. Well, you don't have to decide right now. But now just come in and finish your sandwich, OK? <laughs> hey, 
Hey, buddy. Got a light? I don't smoke. It's bad for you. This is messing with Ron. <laughs> I didn't need them for the test tomorrow. I hope it helped. I didn't get to copy them. Now there's a test? Great. Listen, I heard about the hearing. I'm really sorry. Everyone's talking about it. I mean, how unfair it was and all. What can you do, right? Right. Look. Why don't you just take them? <laughs> I've studied enough anyway. Oh, no, don't be silly. Please. This way you'll have a shot at the test tomorrow. Thanks. Okay, I'm glad you're going all the way with this. I didn't have the guts. and they're going to discipline me for drinking. Rick, what the hell happened? What happened? That's easy. I have lacerations to my upper and lower lip, contusion to my right eye, accompanied by hematoma of the lid, and extensive ecchymosis to the cheekbone and forehead. Who did this to you? Strangers in the night. Stop it, Rick. Now tell me what happened. I got jumped. I had him right where I wanted him to. Was it Ron? What difference does it make? I'm still alive, and I get to Miss Mallison's test tomorrow. What more can I ask for? It was him. He did this to you. No, it wasn't him. Not in person, anyway. A couple of rocket scientists on the team. Payback, I guess. Go Falcons. <laughs> Look, I'm having a little trouble staying awake. Thanks to the wonderful world of modern medicine. I'm just going to shut my eyes a little, OK? Are you in a lot of pain? Let me put it this way. Even my nostrils hurt. Rick, I'm sorry. This is all my fault, really. I'm sorry. <laughs> anything you want to people, don't you? What? You think you could just hurt anybody and get away with it? Me, Rick, even Melanie? Well, I got news for you. You can't. Hey, look, I, th I, was, I thought I was finished look, with you. Look, you're not finished just get with me, you bastard. You're going to pay, do you hear me? You're not going to get away with this anymore. I'm going to make you pay. It's not that I don't sympathize or that I don't believe you. I do. But I've seen a lot of these cases, and let me tell you, stronger ones than yours have never even made it this far. But I'm not talking about the other cases. I'm talking about mine. Lynn, acquaintance rape is the least reported, least believed, and most difficult to prosecute of all sex crimes. A conviction is extremely unlikely. The simple truth is, most jurors feel that if a woman is not visibly bruised or scarred, she couldn't possibly have been forced to have sex against her will. Is that what you think? We're not talking about what I think or what I feel. We're talking about a jury. I have an enormous caseload as it is, and I just don't think this one's going to make it. So you don't want to take on a loser, is that it? 
I know you're upset, so I'll let that pass. Look, Lynn, what you don't understand here is that a jury's going to be faced with your word against his, and that's it. Why should they believe you? Why shouldn't they? I mean, if, if I were robbed at gunpoint or mugged, my word would be good enough, wouldn't it? Do you really understand what you're letting yourself in for if you go through with this? I've already been through it at the school hearing. No, you haven't. That was amateur night compared to this. Granted, they won't be able to use the teammate's testimony about having sex with you. That's not admissible in court, but this is for keeps. They'll pull no punches. Now, why would you want to subject yourself to that? Because I have to do something about what happened to me. Because nobody else will. This is Assistant District Attorney Rumson. I'm going to need a bench warrant. What makes a school great are its traditions. Here at this university, football is one of those traditions. Perhaps the tradition. This university has produced more football stars in the last 50 years than any other on the West Coast. Now, no one wants to see justice done more than I. But you can understand how a criminal proceeding such as this can be very damaging, Mr. McKenna. For the school, of course, for Ron, but also potentially for your daughter as well. My daughter? Let's be honest with each other, man to man. I'll be the first to admit that Ron Cooper is a high-spirited young man, no more immune to sexual hijinks than any other boy his age. But should his career be forfeited. Should he have a black mark against him forever because of, well, what is probably just a misunderstanding? But she says this boy, he forced himself on her. What kind of a kid is this? Mr. McKenna, I have been dealing with youngsters all my life, and I can tell you from experience that very often emotion distorts the memory. What seemed right at the time could look like a mistake now. Mr. Hammond. I have been dealing with my daughter all my life. Lynn doesn't lie or make things up. I can tell you that from experience. Now, if there's nothing else, I have to meet my wife. Well, there is one other thing you might ask Lynn to consider. Medical schools look at all aspects of an applicant's character. They rely heavily on references. Those references, now sometimes they can make all the difference. Just something to consider. You know, I sent my daughter here so she could have a shot at something a little better than I ever did. Took a lot of sweat to get her here, a place like this. But a guy like you wouldn't understand that anyway. You think it's easy to send your kids so far away? But we figured maybe it'd be good for her to get out of Brooklyn. Let her be somewhere safe. We figured maybe she'd be taken care of here. But then something like this happens. One of your students does this to my daughter. Well, we're looking to you to do the right thing. But instead, you twist it around and make it look like it was all her fault. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. It's wrong. I'm only telling you what he told me. Daddy, just stop it now. He said she could get hurt. So she could come back to her later. Make her look bad. Then maybe you should listen to your father. You don't want to hurt your life over this thing. My life already is hurt. Why hurt it more? Can't you see what Hammond's doing? He's not worried about me or you. He's worried about the damn football team and all the money it brings in. He's got a winning team. He wants it to stay that way. Don't let him treat you like you're stupid, Dad. Hey, nobody treats me like I'm stupid, including you. And don't forget that. This chancellor, he's the guy in charge. What do you want from me? I want you to take my side. Just because he's in charge doesn't mean he's right. I'm your daughter. That's supposed to count for more. I want you to stand up for me for once in your life. I'm 
Don't you ever talk to your father like that, ever. He doesn't stand up for you. How the hell do you think you got here? And I'm not talking about your fancy scholarship. He worked like a dog for you. He stood up for you every day of your life. Forget it, Emily. These kids don't know. I'm sorry, Daddy. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm sorry. I just don't understand any of this, that's all. I just can't get it into my head. I mean, you're my little girl, right? I send you away to this place. And look what they do to you. Now they tell me you can even ruin your, your medical school. Maybe you don't have to worry about medical school anymore. Why, what do you mean? I mean, I've been thinking about what you said before, and maybe I will come home when all this is over. I'm so far behind now, and the whole semester's blown anyway. I'm still welcome. <laughs> Big day coming up. This is just the preliminary hearing. There's no jury or anything. If we get through this, then the real thing starts. Well, I'll be there. Rick, you've been really great to me. I'm sorry if I haven't said that before. Yeah, well, thank you. What's this? That's the Halloween ball. Remember? Oh, yeah. You asked me to go with you. I feel so disconnected from the school now. I remember when I first came here. Everything was so new. Every little thing was such a thrill. I was finally an adult. I can't get that feeling back now, no matter how hard I try. You know something? When I first met you, I thought to myself, now there's the kind of girl guys like me don't have a shot with. Get out of here. No, I'm serious. That's what I thought. You were the culture type, very brainy. You know, rich kid like Melanie. Girls like that, they don't think twice about a neighborhood chump like me. No matter how good a deal they might be missing. But that's not who I really am. I mean, I wanted to be, I guess. But not anymore. You know what? What? I'm just another kid from the neighborhood. Just like me. Just like you. And then, and then he slammed the door shut and pinned me against it. I told him to stop, to let me go. He was trying to kiss me, trying to get his hand down my dress. You made it absolutely clear that you did not want him to do what he was doing. Yes, I told him that he was hurting me to please let me go. I was scared. What did he do then? I thought he was going to let me go. But then he grabbed me even harder and flung me on the bed. From across the room at the doorway? He was really strong. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I tried getting up off the bed, but he yanked me back down. 
And then he pulled down his pants and got on top of me. I couldn't move. I, he was holding both of my wrists together with one of his hands. I couldn't believe it was happening. It was like I was standing outside of myself, just watching. Then? Then he, he was inside me. I started crying. I said, don't do this to me. But he covered my face with his hand and turned my head away. And when it was over? He got up, pulled up his pants and asked, how was I? Your witness. Miss McKenna, when did you first meet my client, Mr. Cooper? At a fraternity party. And after that? <coughs> he approached me outside the cafeteria and we talked. What'd you think of him? I thought he was nice. You thought he was nice? Did you think he was attractive? I guess so. I'm sorry. Yes. Now, the night in question, you went to his room under your own free will. Is that true? No, he, he tricked me by saying my friend Melanie was going to be there. Did he or did he not force you into his room? He didn't force me, no. And as for your friend Melanie, was she not at the time going out with Mr. Cooper? She was. And you and Melanie had been friends since grade school back in New York City. Is that correct? Yes. I say had been. Because you no longer speak. Is that true? That's true. Could you tell us why? Objection irrelevant. Are you sure it's quite relevant, Your Honor? I'll allow it. Yes. Miss McKenna. She got mad at me when I told her that Ron raped me. Why? Because she didn't believe me. Well, let me understand this. Your, your close friend since childhood, your roommate at college, the one person who arguably knows you best, aside from your past, did not believe you. Is that true? Yes. Now, it was two days before you let anyone know of this incident. Three days before you reported to school. Another week before you filed criminal charges. Could you tell us why you were so hesitant? I was afraid. Afraid? Afraid of what? Of this, for one thing, of what you're doing to me right now. <laughs> yes. Well, Miss McKenna, <coughs> you've already testified that you were drinking the night of this incident. I had one drink. As I said, you were drinking. Isn't it true that you found yourself very attracted to Mr. Cooper, that you flirted with him at least two occasions. No. You willingly went to his room. You willingly had sex with him. And the only reason you pursued this outrageous rape allegation is because he refused to engage in an ongoing relationship with you. That's not true. That your own dear friend deserted you because of what you were doing. No! Why don't you leave her alone? What's the matter with you? No further questions. Mr. Cooper, isn't it unusual for a fraternity member to be living in the student dorms? I like it better that way. You do. You told Miss McKenna that you left the fraternity because, in your words, it was too wild for your studies? I might have said that. I don't remember. Well, isn't it true, Mr. Cooper, that you were kicked out of your fraternity for brutally beating up a pledge? Objection. What is my client on trial for here? Your Honor, Mr. Cooper has a history of violence I think it's important to look at. Sustained. It's not relevant to this charge. Mr. Cooper, you don't deny having sex with Lynn McKenna on the 18th of October? No, but it wasn't rape. You did not rape Miss McKenna? No way. Did you have her permission to have sex with you? I thought she wanted it, yeah. That's not what I'm asking you. Did she say yes, or did she say no? Well, she 
said no at first. And? Well, I know that's not what she meant. They always say no, but they mean yes. Seem to have trouble communicating with you, Mr. Cooper. I'm asking you a simple question, and I remind you, you are under oath. Did you have her permission to have sex with you? I thought I did. Did she actually say the word yes? In fact, Mr. Cooper, didn't she continually say no right up until the moment you covered her face with hey, your hands? Hey, why hand? was she with me there in the first place, huh? Did she or did she not say no? Answer the question, please. Look. She wanted it. She asked for it. She got it. That's all there is to it. No further questions. Why did you stop? Because we're not going to shake him. Ron's a terrific athlete, a terrific student, all-around asset to our school. He's a giver. In fact, the last two years, he's run a football camp for underprivileged youngsters. In your opinion, Coach, is Ron Cooper capable of rape? Absolutely not. No further questions. Your witness. Coach Seeger, you met Miss McKenna on the 25th of October, is that right? I visited her in one of her classes, yeah. And during that visit, did you not tell her that she would have a very difficult time at this school if she went through with the disciplinary hearing? No, she misunderstood. I suggested the hearing was going to be a difficult thing to go through, for her as well as Ron. I only wanted to make sure she thought it all through. You deny threatening her? Didn't threaten her in any way. I tried to persuade her to reconsider, yeah. I didn't want to see one of these kids get hurt. What did you mean, Coach Seeger, by you better get your priorities straight? I remember saying that, to be honest. You know, I didn't get to say too much at all. In fact, um, she kept saying that she wanted to nail Ron no matter what. How can you do this? How can you sit there and lie like that? No further questions. Witnesses, excuse me. Your Honor, we have one last witness, and then the defense will rest. We'd like to call on Melanie Fairchild. Yeah. Miss Fairchild, you've known Miss McKenna for how long? Mm, since the fourth grade, I guess. You've been seeing Mr. Cooper for how long? Just a few months. A few months. What was your reaction when Miss McKenna told you she was raped by Mr. Cooper? Well, I was shocked. Yeah, she was shocked. And did you believe her? No, I didn't. So? You Not at first, no. You didn't believe her at first. Nor do you believe her now. Isn't that true? No, I didn't believe her until last night. <clears throat> because last night, Ron Cooper came to me and asked me to lie for him. He asked me to say that Lynn had made up the entire story and was holding a grudge against him. And that's when I knew Lynn was telling me the truth all along. And that Ron Cooper is the scum of the earth. Your Honor, the defense requests a short recess. Granted, one hour. The witness may step down. <coughs> By the way, my name is Melanie. He wants to plead guilty to a lesser charge. What does that mean? It means they're scared. They don't want to take a chance on the trial. He'll plead to sexual battery. Sexual battery? What happened to rape? 
Trust me, Lynn, you don't want to go to trial on this. Oh, yes, I do. You heard Melanie's testimony. What kind of case do they have? I just met with his attorney. They are prepared to put Melanie on the stand and totally discredit her. She was his former lover. He slept with her best friend. They can easily make it look like she's just going for revenge. But that's not true. Lynn, this isn't about what's true or what isn't true. It's about reality. It's a whole new ball game when a jury's in place. The burden of proof is on us. All defense has to do is create reasonable doubt. Your own parents doubted you at first, Lynn. I'm sorry. What do you think a jury will do? Attitudes haven't changed much out there. Acquaintance rape is very tricky. It's a credibility call. What is this uh, lesser charge? Sexual battery. It's a misdemeanor, but it is a conviction that'll go on his record. If he ever does this to another woman, he's gone. If we go to trial, there's a 50-50 chance he'll walk with nothing. Well, what kind of punishment goes with this? We've agreed to three years probation and 300 hours of community service. Of course, the judge has to approve it. It just isn't fair. It's not enough for what he did to her. He can forget his plea. I want to go all the way. I'm sorry, Lynn. That's not your choice. What? It's not my choice? It's the state's decision whether or not to accept a plea bargain. I've already taken it. It's a done deal, Lynn. It's the best thing. You'll be allowed to speak to the judge. Tell him how you feel. It's just not fair. This is a victory, Lynn. It might not feel like it now, but out there in the big, cruel world, it's a victory. Sexual battery. Sounds like another good story for the locker room. I'm told the defendant wishes to plead guilty to section 243 of the penal code, sexual battery, in exchange for the rape charge being dropped. Is this acceptable to the people? The people accept, Your Honor. The plaintiff is permitted to address the court before sentence is passed. This man raped me. When I first came here, I trusted everyone. I trusted him. That's why I was alone with him. I trusted the school. But they treated me like it was all my fault. And instead of punishing him, they punished me. Then I trusted the law. But he makes a deal and walks away. Well, I can't walk away from what he did to me. He took something from me. No one seems to understand that, but it's true. A lot of things will never be the same for me again. He didn't sleep with me. He didn't make love to me. He raped me. I said no, but he did it anyway. And all anybody wants to do is protect him. All I can say is that there's something really wrong when a person can do all the things that he's done to me and not have to pay for it. Really wrong. Will the defendant please rise? Sexual battery is not how this case was presented to me. And from what I've observed in this courtroom, I don't think the cause of justice has been served here. I'm going to accept this plea bargain. But I'm going to impose a sentence of six months in county jail. That's not what my client agreed to, Your Honor. Your client is free to withdraw his plea and take his chances at trial. One minute, please, Your Honor. Listen, listen to me. This goes to trial. You may walk away, but you may be convicted. And it won't be for misdemeanor. Now, we're talking felony. It could be three years, maybe more. You take a felony rap, it's goodbye pro football. That lady over there is not going to let up. She's very determined. Counselor? You take, take the six months. Quit while you're ahead and get it over with. We accept the sentence, Your Honor. 
This court sentences the defendant, Ron Cooper, to six months county jail to commence December 1. This court is in recess. <laughs> Look, you want to get something to eat, or...? I'm not very hungry. Yeah, me either. Look, your mother and me, we're proud of you. You did the right thing. You should feel proud, too. I don't know what I feel. I thought it would be great when it was over, like it would all go away, but it's still there. You'll come home with us. This will all be behind you. Want us to help you pack? I don't know. I'm not, not so sure about leaving right now. I mean, I'd love to come home. It would be so easy. But if I did that, if I gave up, it would be like he won after all. I'd be his victim forever. Emily, she belongs here. This is what she needs, not home. I'm sorry, Daddy. Don't be. You got yourself this far. You just got to keep going, that's all. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what I want you to do. <laughs> 